Hi guys and welcome back to my messy shop. Uh, I had some requests to show a video on how to do panel lines. So it's time to do that on the tail. So I'm going to do a little short video on how to uh, make panel lines on your model. Um, got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Okay, as you can see here, you're seeing a drawing of uh, the P51A from Jerry Bates. This is a 1 32nd scale drawing. And this is what we're going to work off of to do our panel lines. Uh, you're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need a ruler with both metric and inches on it. Um, a notepad and something to write with. And of course the handy dandy Dave Platt calculator. Um, so let's dig right in now and, and uh, let me show you how to do this. First thing you want to do, we're going to work on the stabilizers, uh, horizontal stabilizers. So we need to get a look at uh, the width, uh, the location of the lines. And what I'm going to show you here is how we do this, how we figure out where to place the lines on the stabilizer based on the drawing. So let me rearrange the camera here and we'll get started. Okay, so as you can see here, we're looking at the top view of our drawing. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we, we want to get the distance from the leading edge to this, this uh, panel line. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually very, very simple. A lot of people get confused about this scaling thing and once you do it once or twice, it's not too bad. So I'm going to use the ruler on the metric side because I find using millimeters is a lot easier at this size. Um, so I basically put it right on there. Let's count how many millimeters. One, two, three. I have to put my glasses on here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm going to say four. Let me see. get it straight. Four and one half so 4.5 millimeters okay so how do we do this how do we scale that up to the fifth scale and know how many millimeters it needs to be at fifth scale very very simple uh, i'm going to show you a little uh quick tutorial here on how to do this so let's write our value here it's 4.5 right and that's uh that's that's the value we want to work with Okay, so to do the scale, this is a, a 1 32nd drawing, and we want to scale up to 1 5th. So what we want to do is we want to say 1 32nd divided by 1 5th. Or an easier notation would be 32 divided by 5. Okay? And this will work for any scale. Um, basically, you just go the other direction if you're going down. Uh, you, you flip flip the numbers. Um, okay, so 32 divided by 5. Let's get our little handy-dandy Dave Platt calculator. And that comes up to 6.4. Okay, this is our scale factor. This 6.4 is what we're going to use to scale any number at 1 32nd scale up to 1 5th scale. So we'll take this 4.5. And multiply that times 6.4. Okay? So we come get our calculator out and we say 4.5 times 6.4 equals 28.8. Okay? So we can just round that up to 29. And there we go. That's how many millimeters. This line needs to be back from the leading edge on our model. Um, another thing too, you can use this also if you're um, if you're scratch building, and say you've got a one thirty second drawing and you want to make it one fifth. All you would have to do is take that drawing and come up with a scale factor, and then you take the decimal point out and change it to 640 and there's your percentage for the copier to blow a 1 32nd drawing up to 1 5th. Uh, just a little note there but um, 
Anyway, I'll, I'll post a little bit more about this in, in the post uh, on the site, uh, in my thread. Uh, but basically, that's how you do it. So just to recap, we have our value 4.5. We take our scale of our drawing, 132nd, and divide it by our model size, 1 -fifth. So 32 divided by 5 is 6.4. That's our scale factor. Um, so we do this, and we say 4.5 times 6.4 is 28.8, or... 28.9 okay or I'm sorry 20 29 that's it that's how you that's how you scale things um, let's move on now and let's get some uh, some tape laid down and start making some panel lines hi fellas and we're back it's time to start putting some panel lines on here um, earlier I showed you how to uh, actually calculate where these go and uh, hopefully you understood that. If not, be sure and email me and I'll be happy to help you with that if, if I can. Uh, so let's walk around here. Our distance that we need to have this line at is 29 millimeters. So we're going to come here to the leading edge We're going to measure and make a mark, and then we're going to come in to the near the fuselage and measure and make a mark. Then, of course, we're going to take our ruler and put it on the two marks. get them lined up here and make a very fine line that you may not be able to see. I'll make it a little darker so hopefully you can. It shows us our, our line. I hope you can see that. So basically now we have our line and the location of it. So we need to get our measurements for the, the outer panel line here, and then we'll add that. Okay, and we're back, and uh, I measure from two spots. I measure from the even point here, which, uh, which will bring us in, and then from where this line intersects. Uh, and that worked out to be 32 millimeters. So let's let's measure that and mark it. Find 32 on here. And again, we take our ruler and line everything up. Which is kind of hard to do on this shape. But I think we almost got it here. Okay. there we go we got our line so what we're going to do next as you can see there's a line here and a line here we're going to put down some we're going to clean this off with a, with a paper tile just make sure that there's no lead laying around on it and then we're going to lay down some some tape and let's talk about the tape a little bit let me grab it and we'll fire the camera right back up hey guys and welcome back uh, let's talk a little bit about the tape we're going to use. Um, this is what's known as chart pack tape. And what it was originally used for was um, architects would do their drawings. Before the days of, of digital drawings, uh, they actually used to use this, this line to uh, draw out their, their designs and, and draftsmen would do it too. Uh, kind of a neat little product for what we use it for. 
Uh, you can get this in all kinds of sizes. This dispenser does not come with it normally, but let me show you what this looks like uh, if you run across one. There's the tape in there. And basically it's, it's uh, sticky on one side. And what you want to do when you pull this is you, you don't want to pull it real hard because it is vinyl and it will stretch. So you want to be real careful when you're putting it down that you put it down correctly, okay? So we just stretch it over the line, and then I just barely tap it down with my finger. You see what I'm doing there? I'm not running my finger along the line, I'm just tapping it down. Okay, and then I pull out a little excess, cut it with a knife, okay? Now that it's tapped down, I'll slowly run my finger across it. To make sure it's stuck down good. This tape, you have to be really careful with it because it will stretch and it will get out of line. And uh, so you want to be super careful when you're when you're using this stuff. I'm just going to remove the excess right here. And if you notice, I left some here. What I like to do is I like to pull this off while it's still wet, while the primer's still wet. And the reason I like to do that is it, it gets rid of the problem of having the gunky glue stuck inside your panel line. And it also tends to cause the panel line to close up just a hair, uh, making it look a little more realistic. So let's go ahead and put this other piece down. Now if you notice, I'm laying this one, I laid the long one first, so I could pull the short one up. When it's time to, to pull these things. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if we can get this stuck down here. This stuff sometimes doesn't stick real good, so you have to kind of work with it a little bit. It can be a little frustrating the first time you use it, but just, just hang in there. You'll get the hang of it. So I just tap along, and then I cut the excess off my knife and then on the leading edge here since that's going to wrap around to the to the bottom we pull that around and we pull that one down okay so there's our two panels uh, there is another piece uh, that we could do on the stab that I would show you but we'll, we'll I just wanted to show you the simple way to do this. So now, what you need to think about when you're laying this down is the order you're going to pull it up in, if you choose to do this. If you don't choose to, to pull the tape up until after it's dry, you'll have to pull the tape up, well, you'll have to sand it a little bit to get the excess down to the tape, then pull the tape up, clean out the panel line, and uh, then maybe sand it a little more with some fine sandpaper. I like my way because I'm lazy and uh, it's easy to do. So we've got this down. Uh, let me grab my dust rag here. So grab my dust rag and I'm just going to pull it along here make sure, since I'm going to spray primer around these, make sure that there's no dust on it. Once again, I run my finger over it to make sure it's stuck down good, not using a lot of force. Then. Okay, so I've got my rattle can primer. I just use Duplicolor. Believe it or not, it's a cheaper uh, filler primer, but it does a great job. I uh, also use this handy add-on that allows me to control the spray a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a band along this panel line and along this panel line. Be sure to shake it up really good. And then just run along the length of the, the tape both directions. You want a fair amount of primer on there so you can build it up. Okay. Let me do one from the back here just to make sure we get that side good. 
Okay, so we've got a nice coat of primer on here. There's no running. If, if it's running, you're putting too much on, okay? So we're going to let it set for just a moment. I mean, not long at all, maybe a minute or so. Just enough for it to start to start hardening up a bit. And if you can see around the edges here, it's already starting to do that a bit. So now all we do is let's grab a paper towel while that's continuing to dry a bit. And we're going to start with the with the, the smaller panel line. And we're just going to pull it up slowly. Okay, and, and there's one. And then we're going to take this other one and slowly pull it up. And that's two. And we're going to let that dry, and when we come back, we'll, we'll take a look at it see how it looks and see if we need to do anything else to it. Uh, a couple more quick things to note too. Um, I'll, I'll give you a source in the notes and in my thread of where to get panel line tape. Uh, also, one other thing to note, I use model masters to paint my models. I don't use a, a thicker paint. Uh, model masters covers in basically two thin coats. So I don't have to make my panel line super deep. Okay, if you're using something like automobile paint or epoxy paint, you may want to double uh, the, the, the amount of uh, primer you spray on these lines. So what you want to do is spray it like I did, let it sit to about now, and then spray it again. And then you can pull the tape up. And that should make the line about twice as deep. But this is more than enough for, uh, for the paint I'm going to use, and that's something you have to take into consideration. Um, we're going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you some close-ups of it before we do anything to it. But that's basically it, guys. That's how you do it. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know, don't hesitate to ask. We'll be back shortly. Okay, real quick, I wanted to show you guys the finished product. There's the panel lines. You can see they're nice and grooved in the primer. Uh, you can see where I fixed my screw up too. I had brought my tape all the way out for some reason. I guess I was so busy focusing on the video, I didn't really watch what I was doing. But it was easy enough to fix. After it dried, I just simply took some 320 and worked over this area right here, and it's gone. So... That's another advantage of this method. Um, okay, that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask. I hope you found this video is uh, somewhat helpful. Um, this is how I do it. It works for me, so uh, there you go. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, I think I'll try and do one with rivets also in the future. So uh, we can kind of follow up with this and see where it goes next. But that's about it. So thanks for watching. And uh, until next time, remember to measure twice and cut once. See ya.